a part of the development system to say, okay, or like, how can I evaluate how my property is to the market? So then we created this tool, code put, like, see your performance, the market's performance against it, and things like that. So one transition has been from being a pricing system to a whole system. The other has been from being focused on short term rentals to now we also do winter rentals, also do boutique hotels, apart hotels, apartments. Thanks. Welcome to the She's Got Assets Real Estate Investment Podcast. I'm the host, Shona Lepis. Follow along as we unpack and demystify real estate investment strategies through expert interviews and personal experience. From how to find off-market deals to creative financing to long-term and midterm rentals, we aim to educate and inspire others to gain financial freedom and generational wealth through real estate. And as always, please subscribe so you never miss an episode. We really appreciate reviews. It helps others find us and just helps us get found. I'm so excited to have a really special guest, Anurg Verma. Sorry, he's the co-founder of Price Labs. It's the industry standard for price management. So I'd love to have you introduce yourself. Thank you for being here and just how you got started a little bit about the company. And I think everyone knows, has heard of it, but just your backstory. Thank you so much, everyone. Hey, everyone, this is Adirag. I just one of the co-founders. I started in the short-term residence about years back now. So it's pretty long. And I used to work at United Airlines before this, doing dynamic pricing, revenue management, algorithms, and uh, yeah, one of my most good friends from college uh, started in grad school in Chicago. And he was hosting on a when he was in grad school because his roommate went for an internship, so he had an empty role in and. and but he and I got tough. And then that's where this whole thought came that hey, if clients are doing it, like, why should I shut the way it's still? Okay. But yeah, that was my entry into this industry. Yeah. Loving it so far. It's something new to me all the time. And I, I love that. You saw that need and you took that kind of corporate experience. Into, and I know startup life is a whole thing, right? How was it in the beginning? I'm curious. <laughs> it was something. So like we, we took a very different approach than what a lot of startups did. A lot of startups, where you get an idea, you go, raise funding, then you hire a big team and start working on the problems. We basically necessarily as a conscious decision. It's, it happened to have it happened that way. We basically said, hey, by doing what we are doing, the evenings, nights, weekends, we okay, can we create something that will be useful for us, for us and for other people? And because it was software, we could do that. You know, plenty of businesses, you can't really do anything, right? Software, mm -hmm. good, right? And for the first three years, we actually ran Price Labs, but we're still doing our full time job. Wow. Um, I did was vicious enough to even let me take 50% at one point because I said, I need more time to focus on this. <laughs> and they were like, fine, that looks strange. So we did that, which, which meant we took a very bottom up approach. We basically stayed three co founders for three and a half, four years. Just building incrementally. We, we, didn't, we weren't really running out of money or anything to say. Yeah, we need to hit these customers by the end of the year. Otherwise, there was none of that. Yeah, just mm. doing this part, yeah. But essentially. And yeah, over time, you know, we have about 140 people, which is a lot more than three. It has been quite, quite interesting, quite fun, but we have had a long time to learn everything that we have learned so far. It's just one thing, like if anybody looking to start some incremental progress is a great thing. Like you don't have to do everything in within six months of rolling out something. Keep building on, on top of other blocks that you built. I love that. I think as entrepreneurs, we forget that or we want it to be perfect and we just don't, we don't start the thing because we're so caught up and I don't have all the pieces or whatnot. Were you... 
But did you ever see yourself as an entrepreneur? I'm just curious. You know? <laughs> I had a conflict with doing what I was doing. You know, I loved it. Partly that might have been the reason I dragged on in this part of this. It was a lot of good work at the night. Co founder was a little more inclined to start something. He was the one who was like, hey, here's the story. Stuff about like, why not do it? Then, and then I actually came up with plenty of reasons to not do it. <laughs> And then we would talk about it and then eventually it's a point where we like, okay, even if it doesn't make sense to do it, it's a 50 50 chance, right? If you are not dropping everything you're doing, if they're giving us in the path, like, what's the harm in trying? Like, okay, let's first, like, let, let's see what happens, right? And then yeah, from then on, it would be like, okay, once, once you start building something, it just gets so into that. It did start to stop. Yeah, no, it's that thing. So was there a, like a light bulb or like the tipping point of, like, okay, this is clearly, a, a, there's a need in the market and this, did yeah. you get, I'm assuming you got some clients. I'm just so curious. Sorry if this is, I don't know. Yeah, so we started in 2014. We rolled out product worldwide in, in fall of 2014. Sort of, we wanted to see, how, like, mm -hmm. even if it's free, if there's, there's somebody who wants to use it. Mm -hmm. Within about a year, we had about uh, a thousand customers. So that was to be good. This is seen as when we said, okay, see if people can actually pay for this thing. We don't know it's sort of pricing plans and everything. And then a lot of the customers actually stuck on, actually went in and added the direct jobs, which, wow, okay. <laughs> it was just that the all three of us. Two of the three of us had families back then. Had families back then. Mm -hmm. It's like, just, even if they had a thousand customers, they would think of something. We couldn't really sustain ourselves. Mm -hmm. Totally yeah. gone. So you're like, <laughs> okay, let's keep building. And it, it reached a point where, like, we can actually, like, hire ourselves at this point to do that. So that was the tipping point in some ways. And then after that, like, 2019, we were six of us. By then, gone for time and hired somebody. So for me, we became 14 of us, 2021, like 30, and then 2022 at about 100 feet. It was being like, I thought it was being a lot strong. Although if you think of like percentage, it's being similar. Like when you go from six to 14 people, you're like, you have two ways in size. It, it seems crazy. But, yeah, it's, I love that story, just the way you, and you saw a need. So I'm really, this might be like, I'm going to ask like the dumb questions. I, I mean, I, I think we don't think about how airlines are adjusting prices and we need to do that with real estate and our assets. So that, and on a basic level, what insights did you take from that industry into this and how did you change it for real estate or short-term rentals? I'm super curious. So. Not, so I, I will separate down the risk when buying into the mm -hmm. homes. Uh, mm -hmm. It is for the, the data. Uh, mm -hmm. One, it is dynamic. And two, the number of decisions that you're making as a seller, one, you're a big <laughs> in most cases, you're selling yes. all the moments, yeah. kids, right? Mm -hmm. Of short term rentals. And these things exist, and the reason the automation algorithms exist more on airlines or their side is because you're making, even if you have one home, each night is having different demand side. So mm -hmm. your price for a deal is different from the price for mm -hmm. Saturday. So you now have two, two decision points. Mm -hmm. In a week, you have seven decision points. Right? Mm -hmm. A Saturday is different from a Saturday, right? Mm -hmm. so, in fact, they have 360 in, in a year. There are more events. The holidays are very known and people do know they should increase prices. But sometimes some unknown, like unknown to you, singer might announce the concept. You have no idea that they're right, but they are. And mm -hmm. 
the position of crisis protection and then that's a that there is a need in short term rental space. If you're in long term rentals, you can only nobody cares a single there is a big concert happening. <laughs> nobody is taking a long lease. <laughs> Okay. Economics does that come in into long term leaves? Okay. But you made another pretty manual existence that you like most like the eight page, the army, like most of the long long term lease blockers also now. I see. For us, it does not get the same thing. Short term are different. Mm-hmm. Yes, like again, like a concert doesn't matter to a term, but it does, but season taste matters. Like mm-hmm. um, during, for example, summer in in a city, demand for a term increase because a lot of students come for internships, things like that. Right? There are other markets where the term demand is very flat on the ground because there is a constant stream of having uh, contractors or things that come in. But then there is a particular season in which some incremental demand comes through. And if you know that supply is tight at that time, you can. Yeah, I, it's interesting because I think when I first got into midterms, to your point, I didn't realize how it is seasonal. I just assume people are, they're always traveling for work. There's always nurses yeah. and it, it, summer is where it's at. And winter, I have to adjust my price points. I'm not a computer, like I'm just using my little, so I I think Mm -hmm. the power of a software is not, it's really valuable in in maximizing. That piece of like, so I talked about 366 months of like, every day. There's also the fact that how so a day in the body. So now when I'm thinking the life for next year, I probably be a little optimistic about how about this going. So we have, for example, data that for next summer, a lot of booking will start showing up in Java. Oh. So right now, don't miss the, the thing depends on the past. Right? The market which are very last minute, there are markets which are very early. Typically, you see a lot of summer demand shows up and starts booking in Java. Like right after you come back from Christmas vacation, what are my summer plans? Mm-hmm. Up in service, like right now, we, not many people are booking. We don't need to sell for a low price. We keep the price higher. In January, we want to make sure that just right, so you can get the right bookings. Mm-hmm. It's a big March. It's April comes and your choice book, then you might want to say, okay, a lot of people who were going to book might have already booked. Now, should I lower my data so that I think if somebody hasn't booked for those people, I am the one that gets so. So those kinds of things add to the complexity. Now, for me, although events matter, mm-hmm. what can matter is, for example, the biggest problems I feel is when you get gaps between two two states. Like mm-hmm. because if you're in a market that's later, mm-hmm. or we don't have the right license to do automatics, if you get three weeks between two states, not somebody to stay for a week, two weeks, it's, three weeks, that might be illegal. It's like, how do you then, how do you then, because those 21 days are lost, you, you are not making anything out of it. There are things you can do, you can ask previous guests to do you want to stay a little longer for its mm-hmm. price? Or the next one to say, hey, do you want to book a little earlier or a discounted late? It will help move again and both kinds of things. Mm-hmm. But one of the mm-hmm. things we do, for example, is like, how can you reduce the possibility of a 21 day gap if you can get things mm-hmm. created? Mm-hmm. So, if the easiest example I have for this is if you have two halls, they're right next to each other. Everything else is the same. There's a midterm lease that's ending in the October. It, it is struggling for October. If, if somebody is listening to this in six right. years, <laughs> another home that's at least sitting empty. Like somebody finished the lease on 30th of September and it's at least empty. Now, if I have a guest who wants to put 
a place starting November 1st. They can buy two homes. They can book the one that the earliest on at the end of October and they can book the one that is empty right away. It's empty right away. Mm -hmm. But they're going to leave like a 18 day gap. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I get another guest request in a week who says, hey, I need something now, like, and... sorry, I don't have anything. <laughs> okay. Want this to make sure that the guest who wants to start on the number first picks the home that booking things just before. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, mm -hmm. we have some strategy that can help automate this stuff. And so, you can okay. say if a booking is and they give, give a discount for next three, four, five, seven days after the booking ends, so that even if the grades it's for exactly the same for the two homes. The one where the booking is going to be in October. The first week is a little discounted. So they can see this yeah. one is 4,000, this one is 3,900. And then they take 5,000. Right. Uh, this can help you. It, it looks like you lost 100 bucks here. Maybe it isn't for either one. But then the next request shows up, you have something then ready. And in the long run, you hope you make more. So. Yeah. Because that inventory, it's all about inventory. And if you have those yeah. vacancy rate, that, that cuts into That is really interesting. A couple of things. Yeah. So I think unpacking a little bit, STR, Airbnb, right? When you guys saw that need. And now I think midterm is, I just saw an announcement that Airbnb is going all in on longer term. So the date is there the data with midterm versus short term? I'm just super curious because for me, it, I, it's hard to sometimes price midterm because that's usually monthly versus nightly. Or I'd love to hear your opinion. <laughs> yeah. So the way we gather data is we essentially scan property on BNB, Google, and Booking Docs. Mm -hmm. We also buy booking data from other parties or others called key data. Get all of this data for everyone who lists on one of these phones, right? And although they tend to be very short term rentals, mm -hmm. there is nothing that stops midterm bookings from happening in those. Mm -hmm. And so, what we see is although these platforms advertise they're moving more to one midterm rental, having we themselves announced it, but about the 25% of the stays that happen of the nights that are yeah. are actually through term bookings. Then in the end, for a month, they can buy home with Okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. As long as these cross listed, like it's on Airbnb, it's also on, on some midterm platform, Airbnb itself is on the government .com. We, we get the data, right? So we are able to see what size are term rentals getting for what season are they getting more than what kind of supply exists so there are markets like in those parts where they see very seasonal with term bookings like mm -hmm. generally in February is when a lot of people from the northeast book stay there because okay. of the weather so they, yeah they're part of the slower bookings right and they stay for a month two months if you look at the midterm meetings, that is the prime time. But if you look at how much supply is available, everything is, nobody is going there for vacation. Every, mm. so like every vacation that is available, every vacation that will try to get those few months. Just because midterm demand is high doesn't mean you can bump up the price because there is so much supply. But in why that market is simply bought. If you want to find a 30 day rental during July, in that market, although not many people are trying, if you want, very few options. If you are in midterm rentals in those markets, you should be bumping up your rates then, even though you really, the market is in the term booking. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so it's very, demand is higher in February, compared to supply, demand is actually higher than in July. That's so interesting. And so the power of the technology and the data is that you're, so for me, when I'm looking at real estate, to me, I'm like, I log midterm because I'm 
maximizing my income versus I'm not doing like turnovers every two nights. And to me, but I, I don't, I'm going on, I think it should be this. And I, I think the power of this price labs is that you're maximizing what your revenue did. It's very, it's more scientific than just, I think I should charge this. Well, um, so that's like that you don't have an input. So we no soft labs anywhere is at the point where you can say, I will let them decide the price without any input from me. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. even in our platform, for example, you would recommend, you would give your inputs to say, hey, look, my comps priced at about 3000 per month. I'm a little more property. I want to price it around 3500 a month. We will give you a set of that is how how much would you even mark? So how much should you even buy? What would you do last month? Should you discount this month or automate some strategy around like how long the stay can be? Mm-hmm. But you still have that control. We'll give you feedback. You'll be able to see the okay, book compared to the market you're not in book. Even though you feel like you're a print property, you might have priced yourself out of it. So we we'll provide you that data and guidance, but you still have control. And that is important because I think Zillow tried it kind of it went full algorithm. They said, we let the algorithm at the price and they were buying forms and it, it took them a year or two years, did turn out where so yeah. That because each home is so unique, it tends to be so unique. It's really hard. The tangible factors to call mm-hmm. might not to pick up. I'll give a couple of examples, right? Step right next to each other. One of them is they could it it's intent. Like both of them are well decorated. <laughs> yeah. But one of them is decorated with a pickle bulk that uh, has a pickle bulk, <laughs> right. and the other one has yeah. tennis. Uh, mm-hmm. Sounds like the little world court would be world. Uh, what I'm doing, I've never actually <laughs> played it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's very hard for an algorithm to know. Pickle ball is more involved these days compared to in herds. Since even if you upload the, there's no, the very few platforms you can check off pickle ball court or tennis court as an amenity. Mm-hmm. I bug it big homes at this point that I use. Yeah. But this is an example. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it might be like whether it's a jacuzzi or a hot tub or some small nuances that matter a lot. The human being, if you're in that market, you know what people like, what they don't like. We can get that guidance. We show data. You can actually go to the license now, create, even if you don't have a property on any, you can get up market dashboard and say on all the properties in the smart and then say, okay if i have a hot tub how much of these properties don't have a hot tub how much these properties okay. so you give that kind of data but ultimately when you set your prices you ask that in order to say i want to be able to dictate i think that's what i think we get a little it's like a little caught up and the, the algorithms are smarter than me but there is that human piece that how you design it, what your photos look like, what your description is like, is a little bit intangible. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's a really good point. I'm gonna ask you something. I, I'm an investor, and we're looking to. Well, oftentimes, when we're purchasing a property, we're like, okay, I could long term rental, I could short term it, yeah. I could mid term it, and we want to know like what each exit strategy is. And I think what people struggle with is how to price a mid term because there hasn't been a go to. I think price lots for SDR, but is do you are you guys offering that now like a analysis tool for that? So bottom rentals are analysis tools work as it's like the market dashboards is what you did. When it's midterm rentals, there is one extra step and and then you get to do that. So when you create a market dashboard in price labs, we basically show you all the properties in the small. You can then go create concepts, as many concepts as you want. Mm-hmm. And you can create a concept of 
all the property with the hot tub, all the two bedrooms with the hot tub, or, or two bedrooms with four and a half star, but more in waiting with the hot tub, etc. You, you can create a lot of things. But similarly, you can also create a concept that say, I want only properties that are on take 39 minutes, for example. Okay. So once you create a concept like that, in, when you see data for that concept, it will essentially be I mean, what's happening with the market. And that's so, real, it, so you can get, not guarantee, it's, but it's. So it's, it's called engineering data. I'll explain what that means. So Airbnb is not time that happened on Airbnb, right? Like they, they should. Sure. What I believe about Bobo.com is you constantly look at anybody's status to see what sites are the list, what is the, what mistakes that they have. The minimum mistakes that they have is just about what some damage of Bobo. So that's what I'm going to Then, every, like, then we see that hey, these October 31st to November 30th used to be available at 100%. Today, yesterday was available. Today, it's it brings us like somebody must have booked it. We okay. then also say, okay, it's hundred bucks, a month, but they have a month discount on thirty percent. So it's not like the guest thirty hundred times so that be which is thirty three thousand three thousand sure. because there's a twenty percent discount. They must have paid twenty four hundred, right? So okay, then we get to know that okay, booking happened here. So this, 3,400 bucks, right? Now, is this data perfect? No. Because what could have happened is instead of booking BNB, this person reached out to you directly and you deliver an old guest and said, hey, I need something for a month. Captain, I booked your place and he said, I already said 2,000 or he said 23,000. In either of those price we think the one that was listed on Airbnb is not what you booked. Mm -hmm. So, so we think you might book the, but the, but you actually, yes. But in most cases, you are not going to that far off. Directionally, we still get, get this right. It's also possible that you actually didn't take a book. Basically, I want to stay in that place. Maybe. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, and that can decrease our chance of getting but we also get source data. like for everybody who uses price tabs we get their direct booking value so we're able to see how close are we. like when we say occupancy in this market is 80 percent is that what we are seeing? direct bookings mm -hmm. as well so plenty of ways for us to clean up the data but it, it doesn't guarantee that it's 100 percent right all the time it's directly good enough, is what we say. Mm -hmm. So that brings up the question. Thank you for that. It's really insightful. If I'm, I've got a couple of midterms and I like booking direct because there's a lot of landlord tenant law that I'm navigating. So as an, if, I, if I'm booking off of those sites, do I use a channel manager to use uh, Price Labs or what is the strategy if you're booking off more direct? A uh, couple of things to do. If you want to use for instance, one it's forms what they call property management systems. It is just like today that boundary is blurred. Yeah. Most property <laughs> management systems are also channel managers. Mm -hmm. Where they don't just do the job of listing AP list on Airbnb, Airbnb.com, the channels that they are managing. Mm -hmm. They can also give you a direct book. Like a URL where people go and do this directly. Okay. So that's one way. If you use one of those, you can get great booking website. There are some platforms that are for free that we also to get the true fee or our fee as well. Where if somebody wants to directly book, you say, hey, go book on this and it will have, if you use us, have the right set of Okay. And don't want to have a it's no online presence of midterm rentals or a calendar. Like you could create a page and say, hey, I have midterm call me. So, <laughs> but if a calendar 
of this property, what it's available, what it's not available, and things like that. In that case, it's part of the US. But if you have some online products or to use a direct book booking website or one of these, then of course, we'd be able to use this. Okay. So this is going to like really dumb question, but if I build a WordPress website, right? Like just, is there any way I can plug in Price Labs and say the price is this, or do I have to use a manager? <laughs> so funnily enough, there are a couple, so we have listed somewhere to be imported into our platform. Okay. Okay. And for that, I think how fear of my gear and the platform to put that. But once you do that, we have an API that I think at least one or two WordPress plugins which do oh. work with us. Oh. So they can ingest our links and show it there. Okay. Because I, I don't, I want to have a, a listing, but I don't want to say the price because it's so seasonal. So I don't put the price and everyone's, yeah. what does it cost? I'm like, oh, so okay. one thing, one thing you can do is you can list on one of the ODS, like, they mark up Airbnb commission, you mark up the your prices to add the pin mm -hmm. so that if somebody does books on there, you still make what you wanted to make in some Yeah. But if somebody comes to book directly, you tell them the price. I will check my or her body. Team. I think what this we can keep with one of them at least. Okay. And I love that because I just, I, and I want to have my own, I want to build my own brand of properties yeah. and I, for direct bookings, but that pricing thing has been yeah. a bit sticky. Yeah. I love that. Um, <laughs> let me, I mean, I'm doing it. So, yeah, let's go ahead, Patrick, on how to do this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> WP booking system of it, does it. Okay. Okay. That's, yeah. I just learned something. I'm, <laughs> Yeah. I I so back in the day I used to build websites like hand code HTML and so yeah. I like to dabble. <laughs> but um, so I'm curious on a, a stepping back big picture, like what trends are you seeing, or what can do you think people could take advantage in in this industry and in pricing and managing your asset? It's <clears throat> City had the regulation. They severely restricted short term rentals. So a lot of the property was converted to term rentals, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean all of a sudden more midterms start short term to book. Oh. I mean, the fact that there's more midterm rentals to buy means that either some of them will convert to long term rentals if bookings just don't show up at all, or midterm rentals become cheaper. I think buy returns that might happen. Yeah. So one is just on the radiation. The radiation is what puts a lot of people to go with them. The mm -hmm. other reason is, of course, like there is a standard, like long term rentals are very passive in some, they're not actually mm -hmm. every month. Yeah. Like <laughs> uh, but your rents are getting mm -hmm. cheaper. Midterm rentals, there is some work involved, some coding break. Somebody is looking to book two months from now, one month from now. It's, with long term rentals, you worry about it like once a year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you worry about it like every couple of months. months. Short term rentals on the network stream, where like sometimes in your city, you can meet in one weekend the same amount you would have made in a month long. Right? <laughs> That also me. Yeah, it's need to make. By that, I don't mean you're cleaning, but you mm -hmm. probably have a cleaning group. Um, but you are having some schedules, something or the other, some mis some guests to be every day. Mm -hmm. So there is that. How best do you want it to be versus how, how much do you want to get out of that sector? So a lot of people end, end, end up in the middle. Also, because midterm booking. We have slowed down a little bit compared to COVID. COVID was going on. And everybody was in a very easy power, like folks to just work from somewhere else, work, work from the month and go work from there. Not that we back on, not in mm -hmm. person. But even now, 
the number of midterm bookings is still up from what it used to be for five years. It just, it's become a little more acceptable to do that. <laughs> Other, if I think is a lot of short term learning plans, no terms, then that this year, that's not necessarily thing. Okay. Supply has a lot. Mm-hmm. But demand also, geez, so it's not everything this time. What we have seen is, uh, and, and not with necessarily well paid managed. Mm-hmm. You, you might have a two bedroom, but if you like take it up, do a good job, and you host the thing, they still are like, did you can. There is almost the well managed market is doing pretty well. I saw again when I was trying a couple of months, there was hardly any like that, that was dead. That, that was, was like, yeah, that of those the reviews were there, the picture, and it's like we, you would have ideally to stay in our neighborhood itself, but then it's basically a day. Price. Mm. So we ended up going like hopping on one minute yeah. down. It's not like there was like white supply available that I could take whatever I wanted and it changed a lot. I have people, they get into real estate and they think it's this passive thing, but it's a business and you have to position yourself and you have to treat it like a business and that's how you're going to, that's going to set you apart. So I, and that's a really good point. Because it doesn't just do it. So, <laughs> yeah. are you are you an investor on the side, or is you have your hands full with price labs? I'm curious. I have my split price labs. No, absolutely, <laughs> I do not go anywhere near the industry. Like you said, it's not pretty passive. It, mm-hmm. it, there is what they call it, and at least right now, I. We want to need to focus everything on energy in place. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No, I told. So, Ed, do we? Does there anything that you think that people don't know about Price Labs, or any like the hot tips, or anything that maybe I didn't ask you about? As a short term rental revenue management system or pricing system, now I've actually a lot more than that. One transition has dynamic pricing system. To the managing system. So, <laughs> difference is dynamic pricing. The first thing we did for the first three years was update people's prices. Then we were like, hey, like, this is one part of the story. Can you also update situations? So now we do things. If you have a midterm, to, we can say somebody is the book, the gap, the, the dendy is long, sure, 30 nights. But if somebody is going to be a 20 night gap, you can key the automation that says it needs so two months based. Okay. Okay. So it has nothing to do with Yes, now, yeah. But it is still helping you so it's a little yeah. more. And then there are folks who they look, I want the data to dynamic price. How about I want to slow in a new market? Let's still have such again a part of the development system to say, okay. Or like how can I evaluate how my property is to the market? So then we created this tool, portfolio, see your performance, the market's performance against it, and things like that. So one transition has been from being a pricing system to a whole summer system. The other has been from being focused on short term rentals to now we also do winter rentals, also do but each for is a part of this things. A little more broader space that we that we sell essentially. That's so investor putting that hat on. Our whole it is asset management and it's revenue. That's ultimately why we do this. Yeah. So, so yeah. that's a really good lens. I'm gosh, I I could ask you more questions, but I know we are wrapping. I have a couple kind of wrap up questions if you don't yeah. mind. But this has been really. Yeah. I'm going to go fire a board prep. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you give someone to live life on their own terms. 
two, uh, I think one need to define terms. Mm-hmm. So for example, is I, a year into my job at the United Airlines, a texting my sister, mate, this is just amazing. Well, I stay here for a very long I was pretty happy. Like in, in my head, well, in life, in my I have a very good of work to work, very good, like work life balance or something. Outside of very few distracts from work, at least after six months, I came six months. Don't have to. You are not getting calls about her. It's about that you need to answer right away. <laughs> uh, now that's not true. Okay. You can argue my life and my terms. Yeah. Uh, don't let somebody else define uh, what life in your own terms. Yes. <laughs> Essentially, it does. It doesn't mean starting a business. It's being happy doing what makes it. Here's, I might be the wrong person giving this advice. Like I said, I did not come out thinking I'll start a company. Oh, okay. Like, what's the biggest term if you do this? Okay. Not much. Let, let's try this. Let's see what happens. But when you do, then you have to give it as much as it. you can't like, have to be tired. Uh-huh. You have to like generally see how far can you take something. <laughs> I think th- no, I think that's a really good point because I think we have often we we have all these influences of we should have all the freedom and passive income be sitting on a beach, beach drinking a margarita. But is that what really does that fulfill you? <laughs> I have met people who after reaching the point sit on the beach and drink a margarita for two months and then they're doing so. Yeah. Not working out. Yeah. There's the I don't have to work, but if that's fulfilling, right? So I think that's a really, I love that point. Okay. So next question is a little bit sillier. What is your superpower and how have you like used that to grow your business and your company? Um, Oh, I have misinterpreted how analytics should work, versus can work. Have a lot of nuances here, and you have a um, deep, very technical, and very savvy. And I think the superpower I think is like the intuition. But it's the intuition to that. I, the other one, I would call it my superpower, my luck in some ways. It's the two perform like amazing. Okay. The, the three of well. in not just what the skills also the personalities so yeah no, i say you're starting off with one and i said give to a lot of people who asked it i know part where of co-founders but going alone on something new is stuff yeah and i think the compliment because it, it that's a it's like a puzzle piece and if you have that that yeah i love that okay last question early you have price labs you know, yes. how do, how do people try it out? How does that work? Um, you know, how to uh, clearly. Yeah. So you go to website. Start. <laughs> and once you see a little bit about us, like what kind of products, like I said, three products, if you already list on Airbnb or Bobo, you can silly use us for pricing. We show you our recommendation. So you how you can create rules around those recommendations. It'll show you market data for properties around you and there's a 30 day trial. Do not have to add the credit card to start the so like no risk in coming. If you don't have a property, the short term rental chance means you have a product called market dashboards if you are the key to add something. Okay. Where you can pick an address. I want to see what kind of demand kind of seasonal patterns, what kind of light of sea patterns. It's, you can go today and see if you have a property in San Francisco and if you are considering terming, what kind of demand is this versus in San Francisco, there is great government demand, very strong. Mm-hmm. Versus in, in Nashville, what kind of midterm demand exists? Not as much. It's very weak and heavy. It's first with parties in Nashville. Like, I'm sort of like, <laughs> yeah, uh, no, it's, yeah. yeah. 
So for any market, like I'm talking about sales, you can, we have a customer in somewhere. I know they call themselves the little Sweden. It's a small town. We love us and we love people. Nobody else serves small town market. Like for ourselves, it's, it's, it's a lot, right? So they can find data about okay, when is demand, when is low, if is their demand for now, those are not, those are not, those are mostly short. You know? So that's one. And then third, if you use, if you're on maybe a bubble, even if you don't want to use medicine, you can still add your property to see your year over year metrics. So this stuff, see how you're doing against the market, right? So. Maybe if you're not getting bookings, you can go see hard bookings on it and be slow. It might be just up the last year. And that might tell you like, so what we're doing. Is it you or is it the market? That is, that's amazing. Because I think it's so important to that data and those metrics. On that note, that I'm going to fire up price. <laughs> Thank uh-huh. you so much. I, this has been really really fun and i yeah just appreciate your time and it's an honor to have you so thank you thank you so much yes